So we have noticed where the money are. But Tom, is that correct? Yes. Yes. So the, the donor money are there in, uh, in, in fourth floor, right? We noticed that, so from UK, from Norway. So that's one issue is more or less tackled. The second issue will be how to use the funding. So the session today will be more on, you know, the nitty gritty of using of this kind of funding. We have an interesting set of panels here. Okay. I will give a chance to, for them to really introduce themselves. Each uh, only with two minutes. So their CVs are already online. Uh, they can, you know, um, mulai dari Mas Fitrian dulu. Very short, what do you think people need to know about you? Uh, tough questions, yeah? <laughs> Well, I think this is a quite timely session uh, after you listening about the source of fund, uh, how we can arrange or structure the finance so that the money, wherever it comes from, can be utilized for the benefit of uh, you know, blue carbon in that sense. And also people that benefit from that. And about you, except or in addition to be a director? Yeah, I mean, um, every day or, or uh, basically I'm the uh, chairperson of uh, IDA Sustainable Trade Initiative in Indonesia. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, I'm a martial artist and a runner. <laughs> Should be very careful, careful with questions. Eh? So no physical movement. Uh, Pak Sembiring, would you, would you like to say something about yourself? Yeah. Very briefly. Thank you. I think myself is totally came from the different background. Almost 35 years, my background from the investment bankers. I was the director of stock exchange. And finally, I detoured to the right direction to be executive director of Indonesian Biodiversity Foundation. And I completed my task as executive director two months ago. And now they're promoting me a small honorable job like a senior advisor. You know, when a senior advisor mean can be interpreting in the many ways. At least you have white hair, you know. And I'm really an honor to share our experience. How can we support the financing to this important green carbon uh, strategic important issues? Thank you, Pak. Ibu Felia? Actually, uh, I also have similar background with Pak Sembiring. Spent uh, more than 25 years, almost 30 years, in banking and finance and capital market. <clears throat> and uh, it was at the capital market when I said, uh, when I had to do an IPO of a pulp and paper company that um, triggered something in me uh, that I left uh, finance cold turkey and, <laughs> and went to, uh, to, to the living with local communities. But of course that didn't last. Uh, but ba essentially that was my, my realization that, that uh, you cannot be either or <coughs> an activist or a banker. You just have to integrate them. Since then, uh, I've been uh, dedicating myself to trying to mainstreaming, and I'm, and I'm happy to that that um, um, at least OJK has a sustainable finance roadmap, and that so many models are being implemented and tried now. Thank you, Bu Felia. Pak Merrill, please. Wah, ini yang kecepit. Okay, thank you, Mas Sony. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, very good afternoon for everybody. My name is Madril Zams. Uh, a bit different with Bu Felia and Pak Sembiring and Pak uh, uh, Fitrian. Uh, my, my background is actually to completely bureaucrats. Since the last 26 uh, years in Bapenas. I've never been around, just stay stuck in the Taman Suropati in 26 years. <laughs> so. Uh, since uh, in my in 
my experience in Bapenas, uh, I have been working in, in uh, several uh, units, uh, first in the regional uh, economy and then moved to several other units, but now I ended up at the uh, environment unit as the director for environmental affairs. Uh, I have been working as well in this unit, I think since the last uh, 16 years. And, but, but you know, blue carbon for me is a quite new aspect as well. Al although I have been working in 16 years for in this unit. So instead of probably um, giving you something, uh, you know, uh, uh, meaningful probably later in this uh, discussions but uh, i also tried would like to learn as well from all of you uh, because uh, you know blue carbon is a very nice terms and we know that previously we have red uh, and then i heard also in australia that we also know we, we also study about white carbon there is also white carbon but now we also talk a lot about blue carbons Although we tried to link a little bit with financings, uh, I, I could also share a little bit my experience in financing uh, in, the, in the context of bureaucracy. Uh, so, uh, okay, let's, let's share uh, our experience and also uh, let's discuss uh, uh, a little bit for further. Thank you, Pa. Sorry. Thank you, Pa Meryl. So it's human nature to love colors. We have green, blue, white. Uh, pa Bustar, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Pa Sony. I think if you ask uh, my friend Tom here or Payatna to describe what I'm doing now, I think probably they He's also... He's a businessman at the moment. They also uh, don't know how to describe what I'm doing now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was born and grew up in Papua, study forestry in Papua, and uh, st uh, start my uh, social and environmental work in Papua also. Uh, spending 11 years as a troublemaker working with Greenpeace, stopping tanker, palm oil tanker in Indonesia, <laughs> and uh, leading the global uh, campaign for uh, forests in Indonesia. Uh, in, the last, I, I, in the last three years, uh, after my Greenpeace time, I start my own business called Kurabesi Nusantara, and this is kind of a liveaboard, liveaboard uh, business with the Pinisi style. Uh, 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 small cruise in Indonesia where uh, we can enjoy the nature but also contribute to the nature and also to the people and in the, in the same times also I've been doing I've been uh, working with uh, uh, Papuan uh, and West Papuan government also how to uh, facilitate mediate to protect the forest in in Papua and in the same times also just two days ago together with Minister Susi and then some celebrities, we just, uh, we just lost, uh, launched what we call Pandu Laut. This is a national movement to get everybody together to dealing with our ocean issue in Indonesia. So that is more or less what I'm doing. And today I will, uh, I will share with you uh, the, what you call it, the idea about how tourism uh, in, in, in Eastern Indonesia. Thank you, Babusar. So we, we, we have seen that we have a... Again, a set of interesting panelists. I myself, Sony Mumbunan. I work with Pak Yatna at the University of Indonesia Research Center for Climate Change with Pak Bara at URI Indonesia too. Uh, as mentioned, we'll arrange it somewhat differently. There will be some slides to support some of the questions and explanation. But I have a list of questions I would love to ask and pose to the panelists. Why don't we start with Pak Medril? So we, we have people with skin in the game, you know, using money, lost the money, but also using it into policy, it may be successful or not successful. Now we, we go first into the, the, some of the ideas on linking, you know, planning and financing for, the, for blue carbon development. Um, Pat Medril, could you be kind of to share some of the, uh, you, you think, critical aspect, maybe three of them that might appear when it comes to linking development planning in the context of blue carbon and financing the investment for this uh, kind of development. Thank you, uh, Sony. It's a very intriguing questions, but uh, I also prepared a few slides for a, a few slides presentations and uh, I also would like to bring us a little bit uh, on the, uh, the perspective probably first because uh, uh, you know to be to be honest uh, blue carbon is also is rather new for 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 um, uh, for policy uh, development as well so 
but uh, since Pak Tony this uh, afternoon has already explained a little bit um, what sort of uh, um, actions that we are going to move forward on this uh, blue blue carbons, but I would like to inform you that uh, in this annual development plan, sorry, in the next uh, uh, annual development plan for 2019, we already include blue carbon as part of the Range RK uh, uh, sectors. So please, um, if you if you so, uh, if you remember that we have a presidential regulations number 16, uh, sorry, number 61 in 2011, in that uh, presidential regulation is already all only include these five big sectors, agriculture, waste, industry, forestry, peatland, and energy and transport. Uh, we, we already try to measure it continuously since 2019 to, to 2017. I just returned back from Bali last week and we, we discussed closely with uh, local governments uh, continuously every year. But we never include blue carbon aspects as part of this uh, discussions, even at the national level and also at the regional level. But for the since uh, we try to to put our effort now to include blue carbon as part of our uh, Rangerka exercise to measure at least the emission reductions that we are going to achieve through this uh, Rangerka targets. We know that we have already Rangerka target for 26% in 2020. And also, uh, we have uh, a Paris Agreement target as well for 29% in 2030. So, uh, now we try to do best in our efforts to, to try to include uh, our uh, blue carbon as part of uh, the Rangerka movement here. Uh, we know that, of course, there are a lot of reasons why we include that uh, blue carbon uh, initiative as part of our greenhouse gas emission reduction efforts. Um, just click. We know that, I think you, you already know this, uh, you are all my, uh, blue carbon experts. This is just, uh, I just quote from, this is actually Pak Tony prepared this. <laughs> the, uh, in which a blue carbon ecosystem holds, I don't know whether this is correct or wrong, but you can measure it by yourself. <laughs> but there is a source there mentioned about 17% of blue carbon, or the world blue carbon reservoir contains about 3.4 gigaton carbons. And, I don't know how much in, in, in Indonesia, because this is one of the issues actually. We know that uh, I, I've read Pak Daniel's papers, uh, I've read some other papers as well about the potential of carbon, blue carbon in Indonesia. But, uh, this is, but I believe this, there are still uh, so many figures that we need to, to, to discuss uh, about how much actually the carbon stocks, either uh, uh, above or below grounds uh, for our uh, carbon stocks. But we know that this is huge. Uh, potentially huge, and this is this is a, this is you know uh, um, an opportunity for us to explore further uh, how how uh, our efforts later to to reduce emission from this uh, aspect. Next, and we know that um, well, this is the era of SDG. We have to include also the blue carbon as part of our SDG. And we know that the SDG number uh, goal 13 and goal 14, this is still related. And I believe uh, we just had, I've just uh, presented our, our concept to the ministers actually, uh, how then the goal 13 uh, anchor several other goals. Uh, let's see for the next slide. So uh, basically what we would like to achieve in the future as in particular for the next RPGMN 2020-2024, uh, the minister has already uh, asked me to prepare what we call uh, the low carbon development concept as part of or as the theme of the SDGs and as the as the backbones of our next RPGMN. This is not an easy task for us, but we try to 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 uh, take this opportunity as one of the effort to mainstream our environment issue into our planning and our policy exercise. And of course, uh, this is the presentations that uh, we've had just uh, just a week ago with the ministers and Pak Budiono and also Bu Mari Pangestu in the new climate economy. Uh, that we try to define what we mean by low carbon development. I think the ministers has already announced uh, this uh, team as part of the major team of our next uh, midterm development plan. So, uh, still there are there are three aspects that we would like to to emphasize for this uh, for the next low carbon development of course the green growth is one of the objective 
and uh, this low carbon development we can say as a new development platform that we would like to use as in the next RPGMN. Uh, of course, the one of the objective, uh, of course, we want to be, uh, you know, uh, we want to have a further growth in our economy, but this is more green growth rather than the growth that we have uh, already experienced so far. And of course, we need to achieve our social benefits and also with activities that contain less carbon pollutions. Yeah, that's one of the, the agenda that we would like to have uh, in our next RPGMN. And as I mentioned before, we have to include this uh, goal 13 as the anchors of other or other several goals. Uh, and of course, one of the one of the uh, you know uh, the link one of the link between goal 13 and uh, and uh, blue carbons, I I pretend to assume this blue carbon is part of the goal number 14. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so, the goal number 13 will be the anchor for other several goals, including the goal number uh, 14. If I'm not mistaken, it is uh, uh, life below water. Yeah. yeah. Next, and of course, uh, there are also several other questions related to the uh, what we mean by the uh, uh, low carbon development plans. But uh, we also try to define this is the set of policies that we would like to include, including the carbon, blue carbon as well. Uh, if you see there, there is a fisheries there, of course there are forestry also part of it, there's a mangroves then of, uh, as part of the uh, forestry sectors there, and coastal as well. And also, uh, when we, now this is, this is the, 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 the beauty of the, the, the concepts that we would like to, to use in the next uh, development uh, planning process. We would like to include the carrying capacity aspect as part of our planning process. And blue carbon, uh, we, we try to include that as part of carrying, capa car carrying capacity considerations. In the past, we never used carrying capacity for our decision-making process. But now, uh, we try to do this exercise, and uh, at the end of the day, the, indi the outcome indicators that we would like to see is the, is the two aspects uh, on the bottom right corner is the emission intensity and also the uh, emission reductions. We know that in our NDC we, all, we only include emission reductions, but uh, since we have an agenda as well to try to have a strong linkage between emission reductions and economy and even social aspects, so we would like to use emission intensity as well as part of our outcome indicators for the next development plans. This is, with, this is the effort that we try to link between the economic aspects with our emission reductions. We know that China has already used this indicator, emission intensity, but uh, Indonesia still used it just emission reductions. And of course, this is, uh, blue carbon is part of this. And, uh, we, and of course, uh, later we, we need to dig more upon about the methodology and so on. I know that there are still a lot of aspects that we need to consider. And uh, next, uh, this is a very complicated uh, diagram, but only. <laughs> I, think, I think we'll just skip it, yeah, we'll skip it. We'll okay, skip it. this is just to show you, <laughs> this, is, this is just to show you uh, how complicated uh, problems that we have try to link and try not to work in silo. We always work in silo. If you, if, you're, if you look at, if you are talking about forest, many just talk about forest. If we are talking about uh, blue carbon, I'm afraid that we are going to just talk about blue carbon. But we never, we, we need to consider about these interlinkages uh, with other aspects as well. Of course, fishery, or, or blue, man, uh, blue carbon will relate to economy. Of course, blue carbon will relate to population as well later. Or in vice versa. There is a feedback relationships among several other uh, um, related uh, parameters with blue carbons. What we would like to exercise later, including financing policies, is the actually the policies that we try to induce in these all related uh, sectors. 
So for example, we know that we have a lot of policies in the economy. We have also many other policies as well in land use. But what we would like to have is actually an integrated policy uh, exercise that we that we would that we could see what sort of implications of those policy in our carrying capacity in the future, and then measures how much the emission intensity and how much the emission reductions that we could uh, use that we could uh, get from our policy exercise. Sorry, this is a little bit uh, long, but uh, yeah, um, and. Of course, at the, at the end of the day, uh, this is related to this topic, uh, all these policies will link to the green investment strategy. Next, Trahir. Now, when we talk about investment strategy, you know, this is the forum that we would like to discuss. And we know that there are a lot of um, uh, potential uh, fundings, not only from our national or, or, or uh, regional budget, but also there's a private sectors, philanthropy, bilateral cooperations, multilateral cooperations, and even right now there are there are uh, many creative financings that we that we have already created. There is a bonds, there is a municip uh, green bonds, there is a now a Sharia bond also. Sorry, not Sharia bond. Yeah, Sharia bond, Shukuk bonds, Shukuk yeah, green Shukuk. Sorry, green Shukuk, green Shukuk also has been released, and there are several others as well. That we that we need to explore more further, and I think we need to not only stuck with the just grant funding or or, uh, or uh, what you call it the grant funding from the, the partners or from the state budget. I think we need later to be more creative. There is my ministers keep always saying about blended finance. I think Bu Felia later uh, will be talking more on blended finance. I have been asking by, by the ministers to prepare the concept of blended finance with Pak Tony in ICCTF because uh, ICCTF is also part one of the innovative financing that we have already created. Thanks for Pak Tom that as a supporting <laughs> of the ICCTF since the, since it is established. It is it was established, and also of course um, there are also other um, fundings like for example like the. Um, uh, um, um, what you call it, the um, PPP, yeah. Now uh, the ministers keep saying about KPBU. I don't know what the, what does it mean in English. KPBU, it's like a cooperations between the uh, state-owned enterprise and kerjasama pemerintah dan badan usaha, gitu ya. Jadi there's still a lot of uh, opportunities. Uh, uh, there are still a lot of source of fundings that we can we can uh, tackle that we can uh, get to finance this uh, uh, blue carbon, and I think this is the time for us to, to share our experience. Suruh pulang. That's not me. Has nothing to do with me, Pak. That's the pengunjung perpustakaan. <laughs> the time is up, I think, for me. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is the end of my slides, uh, but at least I would like to show you that, uh, uh, in short, that uh, now Blue Carbon has been tried to be included as part of our... Yang mau minjem buku, nah. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Pak uh, Sony and the audience. <laughs> thank you, Pak Medril, for sharing the linkage between planning and then uh, especially the. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be talking about learning what we learn, lesson learned. So this is uh, for future. Uh, uh. 
e event. But uh, th uh, thank you for linking the ca carbon and then the fishery. And it appears that some ideas on blue carbon are being also incorporated. And it has been incorporated under Rangerta <coughs> and the strategic environmental assessment. And also for linking it to investment. So sort of laying the basis for, for the second uh, panelist. Uh, let us move to Ibu Felia. Ibu Felia. Um, Pamere has mentioned a bit about blended finance, and in these days, like almost, you know, people are talking about blended uh, okay. finance. Could you share, based on your experience, uh, what is so blended in in this kind of discussion, and whether it can be replicated yeah. for the blue carbon context? Yes. Okay. Um, first slide. Please. Um, but I need to give you a, a bit of a precursor. I know this is the, the Blue Carbon uh, Summit, and uh, I'm here asked to talk about the End Green Fund, which has to do more with the land use, but that we see um, something of this model can be replicated, can be duplicated for a Blue Carbon, because it's really conceptually, you just have to look at the concept of the blended finance. But before I, I, we talk about that, there's one fundamental understanding that uh, we need to understand. That we talk about finance, this is really about uh, uh, linking it to market, essentially. We are trying to also correct the market forces. Um, and you know, uh, it seems to me uh, a lot of good work have been placed by governments, international NGOs, NGOs, communities. However, um, there needs to be, uh, you know, uh, an integration with market forces. I think through through this blended finance, this is a, a, a way of trying to linking it. As I, I said jokingly earlier, that I've been trying to, for the past 10, 20 years, to try to mainstream this, um, and and it did take a long time. Just to talk a little bit about the market players, the corporates that can make a real big difference. You know that uh, there, there are, there are the, I would say, there's been a, a, a positive shift in the market from the first generation. You know, it's a lot of it is CSR. CSR is a charity. It, it really, um, um, while it's, it's important, it, it doesn't, uh, uh, assist the, the climate change discussion. So we moved on the second generation. You hear a lot about the envir environmental and risk assessment, right? Uh, I would say that's the second generation. And, and of course, bankers are not activists, scientists, uh, but already we, are, we were trying to integrate at least the environmental and risk assessment criteria into the enterprise risk management framework of financial institutions. Yeah, that's a good start. But when you implement it, it's just probably a bit of a checklist, right? So now, as you see, we know that 2020, we're not go nobody's gonna meet 2020, right? Um, so what is it now? It's, there's a further uh, positive shift, which is the climate risk and strategy now is, has to be incorporated within the planning, strategic plan of corporations. So no longer a checklist? No longer. I mean, it's, it's moving in that direction because you, you see some of the uh, traditional large institutional investors like the Black Rocks and, you know, uh, starting to get serious and, and, you know, if the leadership is paying attention, Temasek, a lot of sovereign wealth funds are also starting to look into the sustainability model. So, uh, we, we, us here, we need to continue to push this process, but we really need to understand the market, right? Uh, we cannot work in isolation. There's a lot of talk. I, I tell you what, um, at the State Bank, Bank Negara Indonesia, where I spent a good 10 years of my life, I spoke to just about every international NGOs, institutions, who had grant funding to push the whole sustainability principles and not a single one of them, we could close a deal. It, the transaction cost was just way too high uh, uh, for me to allocate resources. 
is simply because it's this way or no way. There's no uh, discussion. It's just so, in practical terms, it was so rigid. Plus, there's a foreign currency exposure. Yeah. So, so the, the, you, we need to also, us here, need to understand a lot of these risk factors. It's not for lack of wanting or the good intentions, but you know, we're, we're not addressing the issues. First, we need to understand the market as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. So, so I, I thought I'd give that as a, as a precursor. There's a lot of work to be done there. And you know, the, the Unilevers, there's the Consumer Forum, and there's a lot of uh, 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 corporate groups who are forming, who are in discussion with us, um, and, and this is a, a, a positive dynamic. But what is important is that I, I hope that national governments, national strategies can capture these discussions as, as well. But now let's get down to the, the details. You know, the devil is in the details. So, uh, and Green Fund has just been established uh, last year, and it's still new. It's, um, it's, it's uh, a funding, uh, thanks to the Norwegian government, uh, provided us seed money and as well as Unilever. And we're looking to, so this is the, the public and private funding scheme where it's, it's, it's government funding plus private sector trying to find a new model, right? And why is it blended? It's because the conventional financial sector doesn't understand how to mitigate the risk. Therefore, there's very little appetite to, uh, to absorb those risks. Therefore, that's why the financing is still very little. So that's why there is a portion, it's not de-risking, but really absorbing the, some of the commercial risks that cannot be absorbed by the conventional financial sector. So, so this is the, the blended part. So it's really sharing the risk. So basically, the public fund is taking up uh, a portion of the risk. So, that's the, the basic principle of blended finance, okay? So, um, we believe that in three principles, and I think Fitran can uh, uh, elaborate on it, that is, it has to be productive, the work, it has to be, it's, uh, there's an environmental return, and there is the social inclusion part. That's, that's an absolute must. If you don't involve the stakeholders around the area, it will not be sustainable. This is the reality. So what we're trying to do is exactly that. We are trying to f finance the gap, the gap where the conventional financial sector uh, cannot absorb. Next. Yeah, so these are the targets. We have the economic returns, we have the environmental returns, and we have the social inclusion returns. So and Green basically, we want to catalyze a uh, um, two billion dollar uh, uh, value of a project within five years, uh, taking up only tw uh, 20 to 25 percent. So we want to raise about 400 million in order to catalyze a two billion dollar project uh, in in uh, Brazil, the Congo Basin, and Indonesia, the the you know the, the last remaining lungs of of the planet. Yeah. Um, Environmental return is obviously how many hectares of forest conserved, uh, uh, some five million hectares, that's kind of like the corridor. Uh, and then of course the social inclusion, we just want to make sure that there's jobs created, smallholder suppliers uh, finance. So it is also linked to smallholders, which is very key because you know, we want to correct some of the, 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 the ills of the market forces. We want to reduce the, the gap, we want to improve the Gini ratio, et cetera, et cetera. So this is our, 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 our modeling. Uh, next. So um, I don't need to get into details, but this is the pricing for the uh, public and private. Next. And then there was a question here uh, on, on the jurisdictional. So we, do, the local level. Yeah. We, we do have a jurisdictional approach. I think I don't need to elaborate on that, but you can translate that into the you know, ocean, the sea, and the water rights, or, or what have you. You, you can decide uh, the jurisdictional eligibility that you want. 
It, it's, uh, so it's not open-ended. It's not ideal, but it's a corridor. It's a corridor by which we, we have to be guided by. And this also helps the financial sector to have a framework by which they can assess the risk. So jurisdiction here is an administrative definition or m even more than that? Well, in, in, in our case, we look at uh, administration. It's good to have commitment from the local government, right? And of course, there are, you know, boundary issues, et cetera, but that, that all of that can be, can be discussed on the ground, but these serve uh, as a corridor. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Ibu Felia. Uh, speaking of local jurisdictional uh, approach and process, Pabustar, would you please uh, share your case? Uh, in Papua, is it both Papua and West Papua? Uh, for a sp very specific kind of business, so it's high-end uh, sustainable tourism. Okay, thank you, uh, Pa Sonia, standing because it's too cold. Yeah. So while uh, preparing my uh, uh, okay. <coughs> uh, my presentation, this is me. I'm diver. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, cer a party certified uh, diver. So what I would like to share with you is the, what I'm doing in the other part of my life, if, which is starting to create a solution. And then the, basically three years ago, I start my company called Kurabesi Nusantara Indonesia, and this is uh, like ecotourism. Uh, next, uh, basically uh, what I'm doing is the, uh, this is more or less the marine tourism uh, money that is floating around. Yeah? It's a lot of money, you can see and you can count. So uh, uh, it's providing, uh, 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 what you call it, a uh, lot of, uh, lot of uh, 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 income for local community, but also, but also in the same time also trying to preserve the nature and, save, and using this is the blue one, yeah? Blue carbon, that's what you're talking about. 70% of our, uh, our nation is, uh, is uh, water. And then, uh, next. And we operate uh, a ship, which is this year we get the award in, the, uh, in Singapore as a liveaboard of the year, which is we trying to provide uh, uh, sustainability in our operation in, in Indonesia. This is 100 my operation is 100% Indonesia, which is myself and my crew and all the product that we use in, in, in our operation is all Indonesian. Of course, yeah. some part of it are made in China, the boats and... <laughs> <laughs> Next. So, our concept is the, of course, uh, social enterprise and then uh, uh, we, this year, this year we, we at least we we share our profit at the minimum like 500, 500 millions that we contribute in kind to support the NGO like Conservation International, WWF, TNC to do a coral reef monitoring around Raja Ampat. And then the core value also that we, we, we have, of course, that the Every, every single trip that we do, we always stop in the local community. At least local people see that there is people from outside coming to their place to appreciate what they've been preserved. So, because many live aboard also in Indonesia, you know, they're just going around come for, for diving and not stopping in many, in, uh, 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 many places. Next. Pabu uh, Sar, just, just to have an imagination. So it's just a boat, it goes to one yeah. another place and they stay. You, you will let, oh, okay, I will okay. let you know later. <laughs> just to make sure that we are imagining the same. Yeah. So uh, I will show you a short video about the, what, what, what we are doing. So this is the boat. Yeah, so we, our boat is dedicated for Easter Indonesia only. Six cabin on board. 
Libra Basi can take up to 12 guests for liveaboard experience in a sustainable tourism approach. Operate under management of Indonesian social planner enterprise. Kurabasi mission is to give direct benefit for local community, culture, and contribute for nature conservation. We hire local crew, maximizing the use of local product, appreciate Indonesian artisan brand, and creating interactions between guests and local community. In preserving the nature, we travel in a small group to reduce threat in the environment. Kurabasi also collaborate with the Tara Papua Foundation and committed to support every conservation activities. On board, Eco Solution was applied to reduce marine debris. And beach cleanup is always in our guest menu. Be part of Kurabasi community and join our trip to travel for good. So that is more or less what I'm doing. <laughs> Next slide, please. So, you know, uh, this is, of course, this is a high-risk investment. Building a boat is part of my dream like 20 years ago when I'm still studying in Papua because to reaching out local community in Papua, that's something we need something to, what you call it, to go there. Yeah? The, the original idea of the boat that I have that time is the cargo boat to bring the local community product to the collection center and sending that to the market. But because Greenpeace called me in to come to Jakarta, the dream is somehow stay there. And then the, when I'm coming back again, this is something that I need to, I need to do, then I start to look at what is the possibly I can do which start to making money. Then the tourism is, uh, the tourism is boom and starting to, okay, let's start with the liveaboard while making money, then start to invest again with local community. So in the, during the period two, in the last two years, we start to connect the local community in many places. That's something that we will, uh, we will start to uh, 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 connecting them and starting with the product. This year also we will start our uh, project in Banda Sea to uh, work with the uh, uh, spices uh, plantation uh, farmers to collect their uh, uh, spices and sending it to the, to the market. In Sorong also, we have a small project with our boat, which is uh, we collecting wild boar. Yeah? So there is a restaurant in Jakarta called Up in Smoke, where they sell the wild boar, because the wild boar is eating, uh, what you call, they eating uh, uh, leatherback turtle uh, eggs. Yeah? And then some NGO saying, you know, uh, what the benefit from, for us. So we are coming there, okay, let's, let's start to collect your wild boar. And I start to connect with my friend in Jakarta who has the restaurant. And then we make it a sausage, the wild boar sausage. So community in the same times they get the profit, they get the uh, benefit. And in the same times also they protect the turtle eggs, uh, uh, leatherback turtle eggs. Operation like us in Indonesia, there is hundreds of hundreds of uh, uh, boat like us, but only 12 is Indonesian owned boat. One of them is my friend is sitting just in the back there, Pearl of Papua, and then one is so only 12 12 boat in Indonesia is owned by Indonesian. Other than that is the foreign investment. So this is still big opportunity for Indonesian to grow this business. So again, now we're talking about blended finance. You can finance this, you can finance that. Don't forget that your money is not stuck in the administration. Give it to us. We will, we will implement that on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. That was like a call to action. Okay. One simple question. Yes. Just yes or no. Have you accessed the N-Green Fund? Uh, I just met um, Mbak Felia <laughs> last month. Proposal will follow soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. And then my, first, my, my next guest for Banda trip is Tom. So it means okay. the discussion about proposal will happening on the boat. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's very encouraging. Now we, we, we move away a bit from, from marine going back to 
uh, land-based uh, uh, context, and Vitrian will share, or would you please share, you know, sustainable trade, commodities, and some of the very concrete examples. Would really appreciate if they are coming also from a local context, please. Yeah. I also want to stand up because I'm so cold. Uh, I think, in, in fact, in Europe now, it's uh, warmer than in Indonesia. Uh, so I cannot compete with Bustar, of course, because uh, you have the boat. Uh, I don't. Uh, you are thinking of having one, right? We'll, we'll see, we'll see. I think we, we're going to connect in, in spices, yeah, hopefully. So uh, what we are trying to do now is to give you some example of what we have been doing. Uh, not on the land base, but basically on aquaculture and mangroves. Uh, so it's a blue carbon. Uh, but uh, prior to explaining anything, I think I have seen uh, some of our partners around. Pak Mulyadi is, of course, uh, we used to work together in uh, West Kalimantan on mangrove concessions, uh, getting improved productivity as well as concessions. So you can ask, uh, in protection, you can ask him uh, further about how to balance uh, the challenging business of blue carbon. Uh, so, just to uh, give you an example, I mean, we are operating as foundation, as a legal status, but the, our approach mostly is like impact investment. So, we invest with the private sector, 40% from our money, 60% from the private sector. What we want to get as a return is not money, or not necessarily directly money, but mostly impacts. And then we also then uh, created more and more, uh, thanks to the enlightening coming from Ibu uh, Felia and others, uh, this type of blended finance. So the uh, N Green Fund, uh, to some extent, was also born uh, from IDH work and partners. And then now also we are doing what we call uh, with uh, Land Degradation Authority Fund. And uh, last time in Oslo, there was also discussions and also uh, launching of Smallholders Fund with Rabobank. I will stop here. <laughs> it will be like three times, so you have to wait another two. <laughs> Hopefully it's only one time. Um, but just to give you uh, a model that we... Oops. Okay, two times. One of them. Just take it as a, a trade-off of having affordable place. Yeah. Is it okay to continue? So when it comes to blended finance, or even before that, we need to understand, I mean, Pat Medrill uh, mentions about public-private partnerships. So basically what we are trying to push or promote is the kind of model that can get both private sector and the public money or the public support to be uh, combined together. So we, of course, need to understand where, whenever, wherever, uh, you know, that we want to provide support, uh, we, have to, uh, we need to understand the supply chain. That's, that's the most important thing. Uh, of course, when it comes to supply chain, those that are mostly in need of support are farmers or villagers, uh, Bustar also has mentioned. But of course, you can't support each individual villagers or farmers, so you need also to see what sort of hub, what sort of aggregations that you want to support. 
So that's why it is important to uh, get engaged with aggregators and support the aggregators. It can be local cooperatives, it can be Usahad uh, Daera or Bumdes, it can be uh, local uh, companies and so forth. But uh, at one point, you also need to link these type of aggregators to the off-takers, the buyers of those commodities, and of course the financiers. Uh, not only uh, the like of End Green Fund, but also local banks uh, and different financial institutions. I think Pa uh, Sembiring also will explain about that. Just to give you some example, I mean, we have already uh, invested uh, quite a lot in, in different commodities. But when it comes to blue carbon, we have some uh, experience in aquaculture and also in mangroves. So in aquaculture, for instance, uh, this is just one example in Aceh or from Aceh. So uh, since 2015, 2016, uh, we have identified one particular hub or aggregator. Uh, in this case, it is called Aceh Aquaculture Cooperative. Uh, they have uh, uh, been doing uh, good uh, works, uh, especially in the development of uh, shrimp. But of course, uh, the productivity was so low, uh, they couldn't get access to the market, they couldn't get access to finance. So uh, the thing is, we now tried, I mean, we have been uh, investing in terms of connecting them to the market, uh, thanks to EcoHub. So if you go to Singapore, to Sinrigis, to different uh, cafes and restaurants, for season and whatnot, you can find uh, aquaculture products coming from Aceh uh, with the stem of ASC, Aquaculture Stewardship Council, coming from Aceh. Uh, and also, uh, with the help of Rabobank, they provided um, a small-scale uh, uh, macro-credit scheme in which uh, the money then is uh, converted uh, for feedstock, uh, for support, uh, for instance, for cooperatives, uh, so that uh, the farmers can improve their uh, productivity, hatchery, and the like. So this is type of uh, uh, you know structuring and arranging the finance coming from different areas, coming from donors, coming from the financial institutions, in which then it can be linked or, or, or uh, dis uh, disbursed to uh, farmers uh, through the cooperatives. Uh, another case, uh, I think this is uh, uh, just recently that uh, we can say uh, is quite successful. It is from West Kalimantan. Uh, unfortunately, not from Pak Mulyadi uh, Tantra Concession. This is from the village forest, uh, the uh, village forest of 76,000 hectares of village forest, one of the largest uh, in Indonesia. Uh, it is uh, situated in Kuburaya. In the beginning, of course, there was a big question coming from the government. If local communities are handed over uh, a legal status to manage the forest, whether the result would be successfully uh, leading to protection or conservation or whether it will be leading to uh, you know, further uh, destruction or deforestation. So uh, uh, the uh, Asia Foundation, helped uh, by the UK government, uh, helped this community to get the uh, legal certifications of uh, village forests. But then the question after that, what would be the sustainability or the continuous uh, guarantee of uh, uh, village forest people uh, to maintain the area. So then we work together with the local organization called Sampan uh, to map, to identify different commodities. Uh, not only their potential, but more importantly, that have uh, the ability to be improved, uh, linked to the market and also to link the, to the financiers. So we map all the commodities uh, available in, in the areas, uh, mostly, of course, aquaculture, uh, shrimp, fish, but also honey, as well as uh, timber, uh, coconut, uh, coffee and many others. This is just to give you an example. After two years of investment or co-investment uh, in this area, uh, the local communities uh, got some sort of revenue just over seven months, uh, 0.7 billion dollars for honey. Uh, this is linked also to brand, uh, some brands in, in, in Jakarta and also international. And also for coconut charcoal, they got uh, 1.5 billion uh, rupiah only in six months. Uh, so with that kind of uh, portfolio of revenue, so they got also from different commodities, we then check whether the forests that are supposedly to be protected, whether it is still protected. So we monitor with drone and uh, assessment on the ground. Uh, then we realize and we got some sort of a, a, you know, good, good information that uh, at, uh, at the end of last year, in fact, there has been some improvement. So almost 5,000 hectares of forests, not only you know, the, the, the existing uh, protected, but this is additional forest cover uh, as a result uh, protected or recovered. So I think this is quite uh, crucial. So 
Mangrove, for instance, is 2,800, and uh, uh, peatland also 1,700. So that's an uh, important thing uh, to, to address. But I want to just focus on this. I think Ibu Felia has mentioned about the need to uh, promote and, uh, the understanding between uh, the public and also the private sector. And this understanding cannot be done if we cannot, uh, you know, uh, bridge the gap uh, in terms of understanding the risk when it comes to uh, investment in, in uh, blue carbon or in the aquaculture and mangroves, for instance. It is so crucial for the banks, for instance, uh, to get some help by NGOs, the donors, and also uh, scientists and many others, how to uh, be able to uh, uh, mitigate this kind of risk. I think I will stop there. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, I would love to see many uh, entrepreneurs coming from Indonesia uh, to be able also to support this type of activities uh, is that uh, the key question is whether we can then get the OJK as well as get uh, local financial institutions to come to areas like what Bustar did and also share this kind of knowledge. I think OJK is quite open now and also different financial institutions, so we have the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning uh, OJK and Ibu Felia has mentioned also about the roadmap for sustainable financing. I think the case of Pak Bustar sort of, I think cases that we need to populate that, that kind of roadmap. Uh, we have one last uh, speaker, Pak Daniel, if you are okay with it. Um, Pak Sembiring has, you know, wealth of experience from the, the biodiversity side, the banking side. Now, learning from a uh, uh, coastal project, I think it's a mangrove uh, restoration. Yeah. What would you share with us on, on, on the possibility of financing blue carbon development? Thank you, Sony. Bapak Ibu Sekalian, it is very late afternoon already, so I try to make it clearly and shortly and briefly. Hopefully, you understand. I'm just focusing on our experience in private financing initiative, specifically on community-based coastal carbon corridor initiative, we call it. So, although Kahati have many activities, but on this afternoon, I just like to focus it on carbon initiative that we have been doing and how the financing that we've been uh, uh, raised that we could share together with the uh, with the, with the participant here that we can hope that it's inspire all of us that we may replicate in other places. Jalan Pak? We've been doing with many uh, other partners, especially Yagasu. I just take uh, two examples that we've been doing. One in uh, Northern Corridor, Corridor uh, Java of of coastal corridors in northern Java and Madura. And we, whatever we do, we have to support by scientific uh, evidence. Pa. So we make sure that our intervention on the right and appropriate uh, target. If you look at, I will, so, I will show you the supported data of this afterward, that the data shows that the remaining intake of mangrove in northern Java and Madura is only 11.12%. And there we have restored about 12,000 hectares, it's 4.4%, and the old mangrove is only 7 to 70%. So the really alarming here, almost 90% are being degraded. That is really what we are being facing now. That is really a wake-up call to all of us. And how we financing that one, how we supported that one. Terus, Mbak? This is just to show you the data. Terus? Terus saja, Mbak? Terus? This is to support the data, in fact, how we do that one. And let me touch a bit. How, what is the Kahati, how we do that one? As I told you, Kahati is a conservation trust fund being established more than almost 25 years now. Truth. 
this is this scheme that Kahati experiences of managing several types of fund. We have our endowment fund. So when we said we need to establish sustainable fund, the institution also has to be, have some security. We have our sustainability itself because we have our endowment fund to support our sustainability. And we also get being mandated by bilateral donors, thanks to Pat Tom here. We have a lot of projects being doing with Pat Tom. One of the projects is very strategic. We have been doing like a SVLK, maybe you're quite familiar with that one. And we have others. And we have multilateral donors. And also we've been still managing at the point of time Debt for Nature Swap, that we call it Tropical Forest Conservation Act, which Pat, Pat Yatna, they are one of the, the creators. Then now we're still doing that one, and then we have also the NS for Kalimantan. We started from Sumatra, yeah? And we also has experience on the mobilizing crowd fund through the small chains in the Alphamart that we can share after with you and private sectors and also we recently man trust being mandated to manage blue abadi fund through our colleague like ci tnc wwf that's being special designed to support sustainable funding for uh, bird head seascape for marine protected area in papua Western Papua. That's being designed specifically as a as an endowment fund that to ensure that the funding is sustainable for that area. Yeah. It's it's about forty million dollars. Ibu Milia Ibu Fele, one of the uh, oversight committee on that fund. And of course philanthropy private institution. But out of this I'd like to share you the private sector's initiative out of this experience. So I'm going to focusing on the private sector side itself. Terus. Kahati been experienced as I told, more than 25 years. We have 1,000 grantees all over Indonesia. We've been experienced about 1,200 program. And at we speak today, we've been managed about $200 million fund at our portfolio. Terus. So, Kahati, we've been always in facilitating linking between government, community, and private sectors because we believe that we have to work together to, uh, to work on the conservation activity we cannot do by ourselves. This is the small part that I like to share with you that we've been restored 200 hectare degraded mangrove in Jakarta, Indramayu, Brebes, and the Java. If you have time, you should see our Brebes mangrove centers. It's one of the community very proud of. And one of the, our community partners there being awarded uh, Kalpataru last year. Terus, Ma. This is the place that we've been doing on the mangroves, most part of Indonesia, terus. This is just to show you what we're doing, terus saja, Mbak. Then we uh, plan to restore the rest of that 90% uh, that degraded already, terus. This is how the calculation, the potential carbon credit, if it is still on the market because we have also challenging now that the carbon credit is being on the, I do not know, still there's a new, uh, what do you call it, the LHK letter that they said has to be postponed, yeah? has to be suspended. We cannot uh, use the mechanism of carbon credit anymore. Truth. I like to share our experience on mobilizing private sector's fund from to restore the uh, mangrove 
in uh, what we call it like blue carbon as we is a topic been given today we experience on work together with government and uh, bank who are act as a um, sales agent when never government raising fund through the issuing of uh, government bond and this particularly i like to share you our experience with the issuing of the government retail bond as you are aware that when government needs some funding they can have to meet different kind of mechanism one may be from the loans overseas and one from the domestic loans domestic loan also several type like uh, maybe uh, also like uh, sharia fund and others on this particular thing we work together on uh, retail bond that targeted to individuals investors in indonesia in order for government to reach out all the targeted investors they have to work together with the selling agent with they call it the the qualified and uh, agent like like bank or, or or securities company who being licensed to do that one so we work together with them then the fee that the bankers are getting from the services that they provided to sell that bond 50 percent of them they donated to support the mangrove on that project so by then the investor feel more beyond the return of money itself but also they think they feel also that they contribute to protect the coastal area and not the government money but the government supporting the idea so we have 20 bankers and many other securities company when they act like a selling agent they contribute 50 percent of their own fee to protect this project this is how we're doing this is some of the our activity to do that from the uh, uh, retail bonds this is the calculation we have to present to the bankers and the government need evidence that whatever we intervene there's an impact of that activities both environment social and economical benefit we have to show that evidence because bankers are very rational people like Ibu Felia said they need to ensure this risk factors have to be minimized so we have to show that what's their benefit truth this is the the selling agent that we work together truth. I don't have to go through this one because you guys know it's better than mangrove and uh, absorbing carbon more than other uh, three this is how we presenting the the impact of our activities truth This is the last thing that I like to share with you. Kahati also initiating when I was in stock exchange, we creating what we call it green index. We consider of 25 best company in stock exchange. We use it as a reference for green investment. And our investment always 10 to 15% outperform compared to any other, mark, other, other index. So from this investment index, we have two, three, uh, fund managers who creating like unit trust from the unit trust also they have their own management fee that they share with us with this fee we also contribute to our activity like this uh, blue carbon that you call it like mangrove things truth i think that's to give you some idea then i can elaborate more if you need to discuss how we can uh, do in other things yeah Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you also for sharing new information on very interesting possibility. You know, the service fee for bonds and certain percentage is supporting mangrove. Only one question, concise. Uh, sure. Um, this is the, my question for uh, Ibu Felia, uh, Mas Fitrian, and then Pak uh, Sembiring juga. Uh, there's such thing as 
uh, greenwashing in the this financing system, right? And how do you try to effectively avoid that from happening? At, and at the same time, also uh, uh, provide an attra attractive uh, economic returns. Please, can I have this other question for pa Bustar? Uh, just uh, thank you uh, very much. Greenwashing <laughs> is registered. Second question, please. <laughs> pa Daniel and uh, Tessa. Tessa would. Yes, then we have three because. Yeah. Good, thank really you very sorry much. sorry about it. You will hate me, but... Uh, yeah. This is a very interesting session. I, I enjoy it very much, although it's only part of it. My question goes to Pa Fitrian. I, I've been following ID8 for some time, quietly, <laughs> and admire your work, and uh, specifically on blue carbon, financing blue carbon. You give example from Aceh. Um, wh what kind of criteria you implement on that? Because when you're talking about aquaculture, quote unquote, this is the enemy of blue carbon to be removed from the ground. But uh, it seems like quite an inter interesting thing to uh, think about it, and we uh, love to hear more about it. Thanks. Thank you, so on criteria, uh, please, yeah. One question, please. My name is Tessa uh, from WRI, Indonesia. Uh, this is a Thank you very much for the presentation. This is actually the best question in the last. I would just like to ask uh, if you had to sell yourself or sell the uh, uh, green financing, just one pitch, uh, which would you um, start? Where would you start to pitch it? Thank you. For each of them, should, should they pitch? Please. Okay, thank you. Kiprian <laughs> is very good at pitching, so I know. Uh, so we have three questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, each 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 panels can respond to this question because it seems to be applying to start from from the very far forward. <coughs> the side? Yeah. Well, the when I start I start this uh, initiative. I don't know whatever you want to call it. I mean, green or red or yellow. Uh, uh, carbon or whatever, but at least we contribute something, something to environment to protect the environment. And this is something is very, for me, is very important. Just want to share my experience when I start this project. Yeah? I mean, I've been talking with many people, including donor friends, like, you know, I've, I will building a boat to going around Papua, talking with the local community and start doing ecotourism. No one believes this is something can be success, trust me. I tell to many people because you know I spend all my, all of my salary when I'm still working with my with the uh, my organization to build this one, and there is no any single when I'm trying to sell this idea. There is no any single they're saying this is they just saying this is great idea, but nothing to follow up. So when when the boat is finished and everybody saying wow you really made it. So. And then now we, I mean, I, I mentioned earlier, at least this year we share like 500 million rupiah for coral reef monitorings, communities, and the kind of thing. So this is some kind of in kind that, the, uh, what you call it. So when we're talking about where we would like to pitch, I think something where, where for me, we should put my effort more on where the, the, the last remaining uh, resources still left. That is because that's something that is we still we still we still ha uh, have a uh, uh, hope. Yeah, I try to respond to the, the last questions because the first and two actually is not dedicated for me. Uh, related to the uh, uh, what should we do for uh, the, uh, to prepare the project? I think uh, the first thing first that uh, we uh, we have to have. Uh, scientific assessment first for our uh, program or projects proposed for this blue carbon. Why this important? Because we just not talk about financing, or we just not talk about money, but we need also to consider about the substance itself, about the substance, about the, the contents of the blue carbon and so on. So that's the first thing first. And of course, the second one, we just cannot rely upon the government financing. We know we have a limited capacity, we have to have a very creative uh, um, uh, um, 
uh, imaginations uh, how to deal with the several or I think now some of uh, now emerging uh, innovative of creative financing that uh, has been uh, established. Bufelia has already mentioned about blended finance, and I think there are also other examples here that probably we can we can uh, uh, take as a case uh, for for the next uh, financing for the blue carbon. I think there are two aspects that we need to consider for that. Thank you, Pak Sony. For, for both questions? Or? Okay, the first about the greenwashing. Okay, the greenwashing. Um, well, you know, maybe it's a, the, the blended finance space now, it's really uh, at the stage of looking for uh, a model that is more of public interest and commercial interest. So I'm not, I'm not sure where that greenwashing is. Perhaps uh, in that first generation that I mentioned to you, the CSRs, a lot of uh, ribbon cutting, gunting gunting pita, you know, mm. bagi bagi itu mungkin that was a lot of greenwashing, I must say. Uh, I mean, you know, you can you can always uh, uh, question that, but you know, there are also a lot of good CSR programs. Yeah, so, um, okay. Now, on the, uh, the second question, I will state uh, the conclusion first, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit that the social and environmental returns make economic sense, period. Yeah? Because what you want to do is a, a going concern of business that is sustainable, that lasts. Yeah? Um, there's already been quite a lot of study of the Fortune 500 companies that those companies who have um, seriously implemented a lot of those, the ESG risk, into the into the strategy is really doing better today and sustainably and, and uh, less price volatility in the stock market there's been quite a few studies on that one um, so we are today the opportunity now is we have uh, the consumer market that is more environmentally aware and there's a push from the consumer market uh, for sustainability, you know, all the, that's why the whole trace, traceability uh, uh, initiatives are, are in place. So you see a shift. I, I mentioned to you from CSR to ESG, now it's the climate risk incorporated. That is all in, aligned with also the, the, the consuming society, the consumer, not just the producers. There is, there is that space. But of course, in certain countries, there's a lot of push from government and, 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 and well-intended NGOs. You know, there's, there's these dynamics that is, that, that is happening right now. So um, why it's blended? Because we are still in the same economic paradigm. We haven't changed the economic paradigm that has broken down. You know, the 1%, and whatever, the, that's a whole separate discussion. That's why the shift is occurring uh, and, and the economic paradigm is somewhat shifting and it's understandably the excess of liquidity in the market has been slashed by the 2008 um, uh, you know, crisis because those are just virtual wealth creation with no basis. That, that's, that's it. That's why uh, blended for the moment, it's concessional capital provided by the public sector and the commercial uh, capital provided by the market. So, you know, it's allocating of risk, and hopefully the next generation will be fully commercial. Thanks. I think next session we will be discussing absorbing risk and allocating. As a meeting on pitching, or would you like to? I, there's a two questions that I need to respond. One about pitching, one about greenwashing. Let, let me start with pitching first. I echo a book failure. I think the era of donation is over. If you have to sell something, you have to sell the investment. In Kahati itself, we've been promoting at least every single cent that we are raised. We have to measure the at least six categories of the impact. What's the economic rate of return? What's the benefit for the gender, for the environment, for social? So if you like to raise funds, you know, forget the, the old-fashioned way that you ask the charity. 
I think that's been being over because why the sponsor, you may call it the partners or the donors, they have to be accountable also to their stakeholders. They have to be able to accountable and proudly report that their investment, whatever sense they invest, like what we're raising 40 million for Blue Abadi, they have to be able to demonstrate that 40 million at least economic rate of return 10% in US dollar terms. Not necessarily like what Fitiran said, the money itself for themselves, but we have to demonstrate the benefit of the investment. Then they get accountable. That is my pitch. And about greenwashing, I think it's very complicated, simple question, but very difficult answer. Personally, like Ibu Feria said, I think time will tell people have to change. But if you ask me the question, if people like to support something with good faith, whether they in the group, sincerely or not sincerely, I do not know, but I think it's better they donate or support something than they do nothing. But time will improve the attitude toward betters and then the, the, uh, to go to like a mainstream, like what Ibu Pelia said, because the pressure of the community, pressure of the, 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 the consumers, pressure of the uh, legal framework itself, because we, people have to follow the SDG, whatever the framework, has, they have to follow, otherwise they cannot survive. So I think the greenwashing era will be over very soon too. Um, hopefully short. Um, on, on criteria, it's uh, three uh, letter words for PPI. That's uh, our jargon. Uh, as long as we can prove there's improved productivity while also protecting the remaining, if not improved, uh, protections of forest or pitland or mangrove, and then of course inclusions of uh, villages, smallholders or community. So if these three cannot be achieved, then of course we will be the one that first criticizing the project. Uh, so that's, that's our understanding. Uh, we will discuss that later. I al already also uh, share via uh, WhatsApp to Pai Daniel uh, regarding all the things. <laughs> Social media. On greenwashing, I think straightforward as well, with the public involvement, be it donor, be it government, and then with the private sector involvement through the investors as well as the uh, stock exchange, uh, as well as uh, the CSO involved, I think there's a tendency to reduce the risk of greenwashing because these three elements would be the one that uh, assuring the transparency and the credibility of that particular invest investment which I share uh, what Pa uh, Sembiring and also Ibu Felia mentions. On the pitch, straightforward, uh, Teza, my lovely friend. If you invest on this, you got multiple returns. The first return, of course, normal profit. So the profit is not going to be reduced. Yeah, a bit probably, but not, not much. And then you got social security because you invest uh, getting social inclusions. But of course, you also get long-term supply if you invest in these commodities. And I think many uh, brands and, and buyers are looking for that. And of course, you also reduce the, the, your reputational risk. I mean, uh, corporate partners uh, are getting these kind of things. I mean, a bit also greenwashing to that, but this is like positive greenwashing. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not, I mean, uh, 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 I mean last one, um, uh, last but not least, is the image. I mean, I think the CEOs, the donors, uh, NGOs, leaders, politicians would like to be on the stage. Yes. If you in, invest in this, I'll make sure you will be on the stage. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm off the stage. Thank you very much for the presenters. Thank you, Pak Sambiring, Ibu Felia, Pak Medril, Pak Booster, Pak Fitrian.